Galicia, Galician, Galicia, Ali Theta Ya, Galiza, Ali Theta, Spanish, Galicia, Portuguese, Galiza is an autonomous community of Spain and historic nationality under Spanish law. Located in the northwest of the Iberian Peninsula, it comprises the provinces of A Coruña, Lugo, Orense, and Pontevedra, being bordered by Portugal, Braga District, Braganca District, Viana do Castelo District, and Vila Real District to the south, the Spanish autonomous communities of Castile and Leon and Asturias to the east, the Atlantic Ocean to the west, and the Cantabrian Sea to the north. It had a population of 2,718,525 in 2016 and has a total area of 29,574 square kilometers, 11,419 square miles. Galicia has over 1,660 kilometers, 1,030 miles of coastline, including its offshore islands and islets, among them Size Islands, Ons, Salvara, Cortegada, and the largest and most populated, a Ilha de Arauza. The area now called Galicia was first inhabited by humans during the Middle Paleolithic period, and it takes its name from the Galaechi, the Celtic people living north of the Douro River during the last millennium BC, in a region largely coincidental with that of the Iron Age local Castro culture. Galicia was incorporated into the Roman Empire at the end of the Cantabrian Wars in 19 BC, and was made a Roman province in the 3rd century AD. In 410, the Germanic Subi established a kingdom with its capital in Braga, Portugal. This kingdom was incorporated into that of the Visigoths in 585. In 711, the Islamic Umayyad Caliphate invaded the Iberian Peninsula conquering the Visigoth Kingdom of Hispania by 718, but soon Galicia was incorporated into the Christian Kingdom of Asturias by 740. During the Middle Ages, the Kingdom of Galicia was occasionally ruled by its own kings, but most of the time it was leagued to the Kingdom of Leon and later to that of Castile, while maintaining its own legal and customary practices and culture. From the 13th century on, the kings of Castile, as kings of Galicia, appointed an adiantado Moor, whose attributions passed to the governor and captain general of the Kingdom of Galicia from the last years of the 15th century. The governor also presided the Real Audiencia do Reino de Galicia, a royal tribunal and government body. From the 16th century, the representation and voice of the kingdom was held by an assembly of deputies and representatives of the cities of the kingdom, the Cortes or Junta of the Kingdom of Galicia. This institution was forcibly discontinued in 1833 when the kingdom was divided into four administrative provinces with no legal mutual links. During the 19th and 20th centuries, demand grew for self-government and for the recognition of the culture of Galicia. This resulted in the Statute of Autonomy of 1936, soon frustrated by Franco's coup d'état and subsequent long dictatorship. After democracy was restored the legislature passed the Statute of Autonomy of 1981, approved in referendum and currently in force, providing Galicia with self-government. The interior of Galicia is characterized by a hilly landscape. Mountain ranges rise to 2,000 meters (6,600 feet) in the east and south. The coastal areas are mostly an alternate series of rias and cliffs. The climate of Galicia is usually temperate and rainy, with markedly drier summers. It is usually classified as oceanic. Its topographic and climatic conditions have made animal husbandry and farming the primary source of Galicia's wealth for most of its history, allowing for a relative high density of population. With the exception of shipbuilding and food processing, Galicia was based on a farming and fishing economy until after the mid-20th century, when it began to industrialize. In 2012, the gross domestic product at purchasing power parity was €56,000 million, Euros, with a nominal GDP per capita of €20,700. The population is largely concentrated in two main areas, from Farol to A Coruña in the northern coast, and in the Rias Baixas region in the southwest, including the cities of Vigo, Pontevedra, and the interior city of Santiago de Compostela. There are smaller populations around the interior cities of Lugo and Orense. The political capital is Santiago de Compostela, in the province of A Coruña. 
Vigo, in the province of Pontevedra, is the most populous municipality, with 292,817 2016, while A Coruña is the most populous city, with 215,227 2014. Two languages are official and widely used today in Galicia, the native Galician, a Romance language closely related to Portuguese, with which it shares Galician-Portuguese medieval literature, and the Spanish language, usually known locally as Castilian, 56% of the Galician population speak Galician as their first language, while 43% speak more in Castilian. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> The name Galicia derives from the Latin toponym Caiaecia, later Gaiaecia, related to the name of an ancient Celtic tribe that resided north of the Douro River, the Galaeci or Calaeci in Latin, or Calaic oi in Greek. These Calaeci were the first tribe in the area to help the Lusitanians against the invading Romans. The Romans applied their name to all the other tribes in the northwest who spoke the same language and lived the same life. The etymology of the name has been studied since the 7th century by authors such as Isidore of Seville, who wrote that, Galicians are called so, because of their fair skin, as the Gauls, relating the name to the Greek word for milk. In the 21st century, some scholars have derived the name of the ancient Kalaechi either from Proto-Indo-European asterisk Kal Na2 hill, through a local relational suffix Aik, so meaning the hill people, or either from Proto-Celtic asterisk Kali forest, so meaning the forest people. In any case, Galicia, being per se a derivation of the ethnic name Kalaikoi, means the land of the Galicians. The most recent proposal comes from linguist Francesco Benozzo after identifying the root gal, call in a number of Celtic words with the meaning stone or rock. As follows, Gaul Old Irish, Gal Middle Welsh, Gaiaitian Scottish Gaelic, Kailhau Breton, Gala Manx, and Gaul Gaulish. Hence, Benozzo explains the ethnonym Calaeci as being the stone people or the people of the stone. Those who work with stones. In reference to the builders of the ancient megaliths and stone formations so common in Galicia, the name evolved during the Middle Ages from Gaiaecia, sometimes written Galetia, to Galicia. In the 13th century, with the written emergence of the Galician language, Galiza became the most usual written form of the name of the country, being replaced during the 15th and 16th centuries by the current form, Galicia. This coincides with the spelling of the Castilian Spanish name. The historical denomination Galiza became popular again during the end of the 19th and the first three quarters of the 20th century, and is still used with some frequency today. The Zunta de Galicia, the local devolved government, uses Galicia. The Royal Galician Academy, the institution responsible for regulating the Galician language, whilst recognizing Galiza as a legitimate current denomination, has stated that the only official name of the country is Galicia. History Topic. Prehistory and antiquity The oldest attestation of human presence in Galicia has been found in the Eros Cave, in the municipality of Triacastella, which has preserved animal remains and Neanderthal stone objects from the Middle Paleolithic. The earliest culture to have left significant architectural traces is the megalithic culture, which expanded along the western European coasts during the Neolithic and Calculithic eras. Thousands of megalithic tumuli are distributed throughout the country, but mostly along the coastal areas. Within each tumulus is a stone burial chamber known locally as Anta dolmen, frequently preceded by a corridor. Galicia was later influenced by the Bell Beaker culture. Its rich mineral deposits of tin and gold led to the development of Bronze Age metallurgy, and to the commerce of bronze and gold items all along the Atlantic coast of Western Europe. A shared elite culture evolved in this region during the Atlantic Bronze Age. Dating from the end of the megalithic era, and up to the Bronze Age, numerous stone carvings petroglyphs are found in open air. They usually represent cup and ring marks, labyrinths, deer, Bronze Age weapons, and riding and hunting scenes. Large numbers of these stone carvings can be found in the Rias Baixas regions, at places such as Toron and Campo Lamero. The Castro culture, culture of the castles developed during the Iron Age, and flourished during the second half of the first millennium BC. It is usually considered a local evolution of the Atlantic Bronze Age, with later developments and influences and overlapping into the Roman era. 
Geographically, it corresponds to the people the Romans called Galaeci, which were composed of a large series of nations or tribes, among them the Artabri, Bracari, Limici, Celtici, Albiones and Lamavi. They were capable fighters, Strabo described them as the most difficult foes the Romans encountered in conquering Lusitania, while Appian mentions their warlike spirit, noting that the women bore their weapons side by side with their men, frequently preferring death to captivity. According to Pomponius Mela all the inhabitants of the coastal areas were Celtic people. Galaeci lived in Castros. These were usually annular forts, with one or more concentric earthen or stony walls, with a trench in front of each one. They were frequently located at hills, or in seashore cliffs and peninsulas. Some well-known castros can be found on the seashore at Fazoro, Santa Tegra, Baronia, and Onixan, and inland at San Sabrao de los, Bornero, Castromao, and Villadonga. Some other distinctive features, such as temples, baths, reservoirs, warrior statues and decorative carvings have been found associated to this culture, together with rich gold and metalworking traditions. The Roman legions first entered the area under Decimus Junius Brutus in 137–136 BC, but the country was only incorporated into the Roman Empire by the time of Augustus 29 BC to 19 BC. The Romans were interested in Galicia mainly for its mineral resources, most notably gold. Under Roman rule, most Galician hillforts began to be, sometimes forcibly, abandoned, and Galaeci served frequently in the Roman army as auxiliary troops. Romans brought new technologies, new travel routes, new forms of organizing property, and a new language, Latin. The Roman Empire established its control over Galicia through camps castra as Aquus Circenus, Ciadella Camp or Lucas Augusti Lugo, Rhodes v. and monuments as the lighthouse known as Tower of Hercules, in Corona, but the remoteness and lesser interest of the country since the second century of our era, when the gold mines stopped being productive, led to a lesser degree of Romanization. In the 3rd century it was made a province, under the name Gaiaecia, which included also northern Portugal, Asturias, and a large section of what today is known as Castile and Leon. Early Middle Ages In the early 5th century, the deep crisis suffered by the Roman Empire allowed different tribes of Central Europe Subi, Vandals and Alani to cross the Rhine and penetrate into the rule on 31 December 406. Its progress towards the Iberian Peninsula forced the Roman authorities to establish a treaty Fotis by which the Subi would settle peacefully and govern Galicia as imperial allies. So, from 409 Galicia was taken by the Subi, forming the first medieval kingdom to be created in Europe, in 411, even before the fall of the Roman Empire, being also the first Germanic kingdom to mint coinage in Roman lands. During this period a Britain colony and bishopric was established in northern Galicia Britonia, probably as Fodorati and allies of the Subi. In 585, the Visigothic king Leovigild invaded the Subic kingdom of Galicia and defeated it, bringing it under Visigoth control. Later the Muslims invaded Spain 711, but the Arabs and Moors never managed to have any real control over Galicia, which was later incorporated into the expanding Christian kingdom of Asturias, usually known as Gaiaecia or Galicia and Galicia by Muslim chroniclers, as well as by many European contemporaries. This era consolidated Galicia as a Christian society which spoke a Romance language. During the next century Galician noblemen took northern Portugal, conquering Coimbra in 871, thus freeing what was considered the southernmost city of ancient Galicia. <laughs> High and Low Middle Ages In the 9th century, the rise of the cult of the Apostle James in Santiago de Compostela gave Galicia a particular symbolic importance among Christians, an importance it would hold throughout the Reconquista. As the Middle Ages went on, Santiago became a major pilgrim destination and the Way of St. James Camino de Santiago, a major pilgrim road, a route for the propagation of Romanesque art and the words and music of the troubadours. During the 10th and 11th centuries, a period during which Galician nobility become related to the royal family, Galicia was at times headed by its own native kings, while Vikings locally known as Leodomanes or Lordomanes occasionally raided the coasts. The towers of Catora were built as a system of fortifications to prevent and stop the Viking raids on Santiago de Compostela. 
In 1063, Ferdinand I of Castile divided his realm among his sons, and the Kingdom of Galicia was granted to Garcia II of Galicia. In 1072, it was forcibly annexed by Garcia's brother Alfonso VI of Leon. From that time, Galicia was united with the Kingdom of Leon under the same monarchs. In the 13th century, Alfonso X of Castile standardized the Castilian language and made it the language of court and government. Nevertheless, in his Kingdom of Galicia, the Galician language was the only language spoken, and the most used in government and legal uses, as well as in literature. During the 14th and 15th centuries, the progressive distancing of the kings from Galician affairs left the kingdom in the hands of the local knights, counts and bishops, who frequently fought each other to increase their fiefs, or simply to plunder the lands of others. At the same time, the deputies of the kingdom in the Cortes stopped being called. The kingdom of Galicia, slipping away from the control of the king, responded with a century of fiscal insubordination. On the other hand, the lack of an effective royal justice system in the kingdom led to the social conflict known as the Garris Ermandinas Wars of the Brotherhoods, when leagues of peasants and burghers, with the support of a number of knights, noblemen, and under legal protection offered by the remote king, toppled many of the castles of the kingdom and briefly drove the noblemen into Portugal and Castile. Soon after, in the late 15th century, in the dynastic conflict between Isabella I of Castile and Joanna la Beltraneja, part of the Galician aristocracy supported Joanna. After Isabella's victory, she initiated an administrative and political reform which the chronicler Geronimo Zarita defined as Doma del Reino de Galicia. It was then when the taming of Galicia began, because not just the local lords and knights, but all the people of that nation were the ones against the others very bold and warlike. These reforms, while establishing a local government and tribunal the Real Audiencia del Reino de Galicia and bringing the noblemen under submission, also brought most Galician monasteries and institutions under Castilian control, in what has been criticized as a process of centralization. At the same time the kings began to call the Zunta or Cortes of the Kingdom of Galicia, an assembly of deputies or representatives of the cities of the kingdom, to ask for monetary and military contributions. This assembly soon developed into the voice and legal representation of the kingdom, and the depositary of its will and laws. Early modern The modern period of the Kingdom of Galicia began with the murder or defeat of some of the most powerful Galician lords, such as Pedro Álvarez de Sotomayor, called Pedro Madruga, and Rodrigo Henriquez Osorio, at the hands of the Castilian armies sent to Galicia between the years 1480 and 1486. Isabella I of Castile, considered a usurper by many Galician nobles, eradicated all armed resistance and definitively established the royal power of the Castilian monarchy. Fearing a general revolt, the monarchs ordered the banishing of the rest of the great lords like Pedro de Bolaño, Diego de Andrade or Lope Sánchez de Moscoso, among others. The establishment of the Santa Hermandad in 1480, and of the Real Audiencia del Reino de Galicia in 1500—a tribunal and executive body directed by the governor-captain-general as a direct representative of the king, implied initially the submission of the kingdom to the crown, after a century of unrest and fiscal insubordination. As a result, from 1480 to 1520 the Kingdom of Galicia contributed more than 10% of the total earnings of the Crown of Castile, including the Americas, well over its economic relevance. Like the rest of Spain, the 16th century was marked by population growth up to 1580, when the simultaneous wars with the Netherlands, France and England hampered Galicia's Atlantic commerce, which consisted mostly in the exportation of sardines, wood, and some cattle and wine. In the late years of the 15th century the written form of the Galician language began a slow decline as it was increasingly replaced by Spanish, which would culminate in the Seculos Oscuros, the Dark Centuries of the language, roughly from the 16th century through to the mid-18th century, when written Galician almost completely disappeared except for private or occasional uses but the spoken language remained the common language of the people in the villages and even the cities. From that moment Galicia, which participated to a minor extent in the American expansion of the Spanish Empire, found itself at the center of the Atlantic Wars fought by Spain against the French and the Protestant powers of England and the Netherlands, whose privateers attacked the coastal areas, but major assaults were not common as the coastline was difficult and the harbors easily defended. 
The most famous assaults were upon the city of Vigo by Sir Francis Drake in 1585 and 1589, and the siege of A Coruña in 1589 by the English Armada. Galicia also suffered occasional slave raids by Barbary pirates, but not as frequently as the Mediterranean coastal areas. The most famous Barbary attack was the bloody sack of the town of Cangas in 1617. At the time, the king's petitions for money and troops became more frequent, due to the human and economic exhaustion of Castile. The Junta of the Kingdom of Galicia the local Cortes or representative assembly was initially receptive to these petitions, raising large sums, accepting the conscription of the men of the kingdom, and even commissioning a new naval squadron which was sustained with the incomes of the kingdom. After the rupture of the wars with Portugal and Catalonia, the junta changed its attitude, this time due to the exhaustion of Galicia, now involved not just in naval or overseas operations, but also in an exhausting war with the Portuguese, war which produced thousands of casualties and refugees and was heavily disturbing to the local economy and commerce. So, in the second half of the 17th century the junta frequently denied or considerably reduced the initial petitions of the monarch, and though the tension didn't rise to the levels experienced in Portugal or Catalonia, there were frequent urban mutinies and some voices even asked for the secession of the Kingdom of Galicia. <laughs> Late modern and contemporary During the Peninsular War the successful uprising of the local people against the new French authorities, together with the support of the British Army, limited the occupation to a six-month period in 1808–1809. During the pre-war period the Supreme Council of the Kingdom of Galicia Junta Suprema del Reino de Galicia, auto-proclaimed interim sovereign in 1808, was the sole government of the country and mobilized near 40,000 men against the invaders. The 1833 Territorial Division of Spain put a formal end to the Kingdom of Galicia, unifying Spain into a single centralized monarchy. Instead of seven provinces and a regional administration, Galicia was reorganized into the current four provinces. Although it was recognized as a historical region, that status was strictly honorific. In reaction, nationalist and federalist movements arose. The liberal general Miguel Solís Cuedos led a separatist coup attempt in 1846 against the authoritarian regime of Ramón María Narváez. Solís and his forces were defeated at the Battle of Cacheras, 23 April 1846, and the survivors, including Solís himself, were shot. They have taken their place in Galician memory as the Martyrs of Carol or simply the Martyrs of Liberty. Defeated on the military front, Galicians turned to culture. The Rexurdimento focused on recovery of the Galician language as a vehicle of social and cultural expression. Among the writers associated with this movement are Rosalia de Castro, Manuel Murguia, Manuel Liras Pulpero, and Eduardo Pondal. In the early 20th century came another turn toward nationalist politics with Solidaridad Galega modeled on Solidaritat Catalana in Catalonia. Solidaridad Galega failed, but in 1916 Hermandades da Fala developed first as a cultural association but soon as a full-blown nationalist movement. Vicente Risco and Ramón Otero Pedreo were outstanding cultural figures of this movement, and the magazine Knows Us, founded 1920, its most notable cultural institution, Lois Peña Novo the outstanding political figure. The Second Spanish Republic was declared in 1931. During the Republic, the Partido Galaguista PG was the most important of a shifting collection of Galician nationalist parties. Following a referendum on a Galician statute of autonomy, Galicia was granted the status of an autonomous region. Galicia was spared the worst of the fighting in that war, it was one of the areas where the initial coup attempt at the outset of the war was successful, and it remained in nationalist Franco's armies hands throughout the war. While there were no pitched battles, there was repression and death, all political parties were abolished, as were all labor unions and Galician nationalist organizations as the Seminario de Estudos Galagos. Galicia's statute of autonomy was annulled, as were those of Catalonia and the Basque provinces once those were conquered. According to Carlos Fernández Santander, at least 4,200 people were killed either extrajudicially or after summary trials, among them Republicans, Communists, Galician Nationalists, Socialists and Anarchists. 
Victims included the civil governors of all four Galician provinces, Juana Capdeviel, the wife of the governor of A. Coruña, mayors such as Anxel Casal of Santiago de Compostela, of the Partido Galaguista, prominent socialists such as Jaime Quintanilla in Farol and Emilio Martinez Garrido in Vigo, Popular Front deputies Antonio Bilbatua, José Miñones, Díaz Villamil, Ignacio Sion, and former deputy Heraclio Batana, soldiers who had not joined the rebellion, such as generals Rogelio Caridad Pita and Enrique Salcedo Molinuevo and Admiral Antonio Azarola, and the founders of the PG, Alexander Baveda and Victor Casas, as well as other professionals akin to Republicans and nationalists, as the journalist Manuel Lusters Rivas or physician Luis Poza Pastrana. Many others were forced to escape into exile, or were victims of other reprisals and removed from their jobs and positions. General Francisco Franco himself a Galician from Farol ruled as dictator from the Civil War until his death in 1975. Franco's centralizing regime suppressed any official use of the Galician language, including the use of Galician names for newborns, although its everyday oral use was not forbidden. Among the attempts at resistance were small leftist guerrilla groups such as those led by José Castro Vega o Piloto", and Benigno Andrade Fochelas", both of whom were ultimately captured and executed. In the 1960s, ministers such as Manuel Fraga Iribarn introduced some reforms allowing technocrats affiliated with Opus Dei to modernize administration in a way that facilitated capitalist economic development. However, for decades Galicia was largely confined to the role of a supplier of raw materials and energy to the rest of Spain, causing environmental havoc and leading to a wave of migration to Venezuela and to various parts of Europe. Fenosa, the monopolistic supplier of electricity, built hydroelectric dams, flooding many Galician river valleys. The Galician economy finally began to modernize with a citron factory in Vigo, the modernization of the canning industry and the fishing fleet, and eventually a modernization of small peasant farming practices, especially in the production of cow's milk. In the province of Orense, businessman and politician Eulogio Gomez Francara gave impetus to the raising of livestock and poultry by establishing the Cooperativa Orensana S.A. During the last decade of Franco's rule, there was a renewal of nationalist feeling in Galicia. The early 1970s were a time of unrest among university students, workers, and farmers. In 1972, general strikes in Vigo and Farol cost the lives of Amador Rey and Daniel Niebla. Later, the Bishop of Mondoñedo Farol, Miguel Anxo Arizo Iglesias, wrote a pastoral letter that was not well received by the Franco regime, about a demonstration in Bazin Farol where two workers died. As part of the transition to democracy upon the death of Franco in 1975, Galicia regained its status as an autonomous region within Spain with the Statute of Autonomy of 1981, which begins. Galicia, historical nationality, is constituted as an autonomous community to access to its self-government, in agreement with the Spanish constitution and with the present statute." Varying degrees of nationalist or independentist sentiment are evident at the political level. The Bloc Nacionalista Galago or BNG, is a conglomerate of left-wing parties and individuals that claims Galician political status as a nation. From 1990 to 2005, Manuel Fraga, former minister and ambassador in the Franco dictature, presided over the Galician autonomous government, the Junta de Galicia. Fraga was associated with the Partido Popular People's Party, Spain's main national conservative party since its founding. In 2002, when the oil tanker Prestige sank and covered the Galician coast in oil, Fraga was accused by the grassroots movement Nunca Mays, never again, of having been unwilling to react. In the 2005 Galician elections, the People's Party lost its absolute majority, though remaining barely the largest party in the parliament, with 43% of the total votes. As a result, power passed to a coalition of the Partido dos Socialistas de Galicia PSDEG Galician Socialists Party, a federal sister party of Spain's main social democratic party, the Partido Socialista Obrero Español PSOE, Spanish Socialist Workers Party and the nationalist bloc Nacionalista Galago BNG. As the senior partner in the new coalition, the PSDEG nominated its leader, Emilio Pérez Torino, to serve as Galicia's new president, with Anxo Quintana, the leader of BNG, as its vice president. 
In 2009, the PSDGBNG coalition lost the elections and the government went back to the People's Party conservative, even though the PSDGBNG coalition actually obtained the most votes. Alberto Núñez Feiju is now Galicia's president. In 2012 several parties and individuals abandoned the BNG. Encontro Ermandinho abandoned the bloc and joined with Front Abrera Galega, the FPG, Movimento Pola Base and other collectives to form Inova Nationalist Brotherhood. Inova obtained nine seats in the 2012 Galician election as part of the Galician Left Alternative Coalition. BNG obtained seven seats and PPDG won the elections again. Geography <inaudible> 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 Galicia has a surface area of 29,574 square kilometers, 11,419 square miles. Its northernmost point at 43 degrees 47 N is Estaca de Bears, also the northernmost point of Spain. Its southernmost at 41 degrees 49 N is on the Portuguese border in the Baixa Limia Serra do Zarais Natural Park. The easternmost longitude is at 6 degrees 42 W on the border between the province of Orense and the Castilian Leonese province of Zamora its westernmost at 9 degrees 18 W, reached in two places, the A Nave Cape in Fistera also known as Finisterre, and Cape Torignan, both in the province of A Coruña. Topography The interior of Galicia is a hilly landscape, composed of relatively low mountain ranges, usually below 1,000 metres 3, feet high, without sharp peaks, rising to 2,000 metres 6, feet in the eastern mountains. There are many rivers, most though not all, running down relatively gentle slopes in narrow river valleys, though at times their courses become far more rugged, as in the canyons of the Sil River, Galicia's second most important river after the Minho. Topographically, a remarkable feature of Galicia is the presence of many firth-like inlets along the coast, estuaries that were drowned with rising sea levels after the Ice Age. These are called rias and are divided into the smaller rias altas, high rias, and the larger rias baixas, low rias. The rias altas include Ribadeo, Foz, Vivero, O Barquero, Ordigera, Cedera, Farol, Betanthos, A Coruña, Corme e Lax and Camarinhas. The Rias Baixas, found south of Fistera, include Corcubian, Muros e Noia, Arauza, Pontevedra, and Vigo. The Rias Altas can sometimes refer only to those east of Estaca de Bears, with the others being called Rias Medias. Intermediate Rias. Erosion by the Atlantic Ocean has contributed to the great number of capes. Besides the aforementioned Estaca de Bears in the far north, separating the Atlantic Ocean from the Cantabrian Sea, other notable capes are Cape Ortegal, Cape Prior, Punta Santo Adrao, Cape Vilan, Cape Torignan, westernmost point in Galicia, Cape Finisterre or Fistera, considered by the Romans, along with Finister in Brittany and Land's End in Cornwall, to be the end of the known world. All along the Galician coast are various archipelagos near the mouths of the Rias. These archipelagos provide protected deepwater harbors and also provide habitat for seagoing birds. A 2007 inventory estimates that the Galician coast has 316 archipelagos, islets, and freestanding rocks. Among the most important of these are the archipelagos of Sais, Ons, and Salvara. Together with Cortegada Island, these make up the Atlantic Islands of Galicia National Park. Other significant islands are Ila Malveras, Ila Cisargas, and, the largest and holding the largest population, Arauza Island. The coast of this green corner of the Iberian Peninsula, some 1,500 kilometers 930 miles in length, attracts great numbers of tourists, although real estate development in the 2000-2010 decade have degraded it partially. Galicia is quite mountainous, a fact which has contributed to isolate the rural areas, hampering communications, most notably in the inland. The main mountain range is the Macizo Galeco Serra do Eixe, Serra da Lastra, Serra do Corel, also known as Macizo Galeco Leones, located in the eastern parts, bordering with Castile and Leon. 
Noteworthy mountain ranges are Oxistral, northern Lugo, the Serra dos Ancares on the border with Leon and Asturias, O Corel on the border with Leon, Oeixe, the border between Orense and Zamora, Serra de Quixa in the center of Orense province, O Faro, the border between Lugo and Pontevedra, Cova da Serp, border of Lugo and A Coruña, Montemayor, A Coruña, Montes do Testero, Serra do Suido, and Faro de Avian between Pontevedra and Orense, and to the south, A Peneda. Ozares and Olaruco, all on the border of Orense and Portugal. The highest point in Galicia is Travinca or Peña Travinca, 2,124 meters or 6,969 feet, located in the Serra do Eixe, at the border between Orense and Leon and Zamora provinces. Other tall peaks are Peña Servaya, 2112 meters or 6929 feet in the Serra do Eixe, O Mustalar, 1935 meters or 6348 feet in Os Ancares, and Cabeza de Manzaneda, 1782 meters or 5846 feet in Serra de Quixa, where there is a ski resort. Topic: <laughs> Hydrography. Galicia is poetically known as the country of the thousand rivers. O pays dos mil rios. The largest and most important of these rivers is the Miño, poetically known as O Pai Miño, Father Miño, which is 307.5 kilometers, 191.1 miles long and discharges 419 cubic meters, 548 cuyd per second with its affluent the Sil, which has created a spectacular canyon. Most of the rivers in the inland are tributaries of this river system, which drains some 17,027 square kilometers, 6,574 square miles. Other rivers run directly into the Atlantic Ocean or the Cantabrian Sea, most of them having short courses. Only the Navia, Ulla, Tambor, and Limia have courses longer than 100 kilometers, 62 miles. Galicia's many hydroelectric dams take advantage of the steep, deep, narrow rivers and their canyons. Due to their steep course, few of Galicia's rivers are navigable, other than the lower portion of the Miño and the portions of various rivers that have been dammed into reservoirs. Some rivers are navigable by small boats in their lower reaches, this is taken great advantage of in a number of semi-aquatic festivals and pilgrimages. <inaudible> <inaudible> environment Galicia has preserved some of its dense forests. It is relatively unpolluted, and its landscapes composed of green hills, cliffs and rias are generally different from what is commonly understood as Spanish landscape. Nevertheless, Galicia has some important environmental problems. Deforestation and forest fires are a problem in many areas, as is the continual spread of the eucalyptus tree, a species imported from Australia, actively promoted by the paper industry since the mid-20th century. Galicia is one of the more forested areas of Spain, but the majority of Galicia's plantations, usually growing eucalyptus or pine, lack any formal management. Massive eucalyptus plantation, especially of eucalyptus globalis, began in the Francisco Franco era, largely on behalf of the paper company Impresa Nacional de Celulosas de España in Pontevedra, which wanted it for its pulp. Wood products figure significantly in Galicia's economy. Apart from tree plantations Galicia is also notable for the extensive surface occupied by meadows used for animal husbandry, especially cattle, an important activity. Hydroelectric development in most rivers has been a serious concern for local conservationists during the last decades. Fauna, most notably the European wolf, has suffered because of the actions of livestock owners and farmers, and because of the loss of habitats, whilst the native deer species have declined because of hunting and development. Oil spills are a major issue. The Prestige oil spill in 2002 spilt more oil than the Exxon Valdez in Alaska. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Biodiversity. Galicia has more than 2800 plant species and 31 endemic plant taxons. A few oak forests, variously known locally as fragas or devases, remain particularly in the north central part of the province of Lugo and the north of the province of A Coruña. Fragas do Yume. 
Galicia has 262 inventoried species of vertebrates, including 12 species of freshwater fish, 15 amphibians, 24 reptiles, 152 birds, and 59 mammals. The animals most often thought of as being typical of Galicia are the livestock raised there. The Galician horse is native to the region, as is the Galician blonde cow and the domestic fowl known as the Galinha de Mos. The last is an endangered species, although it is showing signs of a comeback since 2001. Galicia's woodlands and mountains are home to rabbits, hares, wild boars, and roe deer, all of which are popular with hunters. Several important bird migration routes pass through Galicia, and some of the community's relatively few environmentally protected areas are special protection areas such as on the Ria de Ribadeo for these birds. From a domestic point of view, Galicia has been credited for author Manuel Rivas as the land of one million cows. Galician blonde and Holstein cattle coexist on meadows and farms. Topic: <inaudible> Climate. Being located on the Atlantic coastline, Galicia has a very mild climate for the latitude and the marine influence affects most of the province to various degrees. In comparison to similar latitudes on the other side of the Atlantic, winters are exceptionally mild with consistently heavy rainfall. At sea level, snow is exceptional due to temperatures just occasionally dropping below freezing. The warmest coastal station of Pontevedra has a yearly mean temperature of 14.8 degrees Celsius .6 degrees Fahrenheit. Orense located somewhat inland is only slightly warmer with 14.9 degrees Celsius .8 degrees Fahrenheit. Due to its exposed northwesterly location, the climate is still very cool by Spanish standards. In coastal areas summers are tempered, with daily maximums averaging around 25 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit in Vigo. Temperatures are further cooler in A Coruña, with a subdued 22.8 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit normal. Temperatures do however soar in inland areas such as Orense, where days above 30 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit are very regular. The lands of Galicia are ascribed to two different areas in the Köppen climate classification, a south area roughly, the province of Orense and Pontevedra with tendencies to have some summer drought, classified as a warm summer Mediterranean climate CSB, with mild temperatures and rainfall usual throughout the year, and the western and northern coastal regions, the provinces of Lugo and A Coruña, which are characterized by their oceanic climate CFB, with a more uniform precipitation distribution along the year, and milder summers. However, precipitation in southern coastal areas are often classified as oceanic since the averages remain significantly higher than a typical Mediterranean climate. As an example, Santiago de Compostela, the political capital city, has an average of 129 rainy days and 1,362 mm per year with just 17 rainy days in the three summer months and 2,101 sunlight hours per year, with just six days with frosts per year. But the colder city of Lugo, to the east, has an average of 1,759 sunlight hours per year, 117 days with precipitations greater than 1 mm totaling 901.54 mm .5 in, and 40 days with frosts per year. The more mountainous parts of the provinces of Orense and Lugo receive significant snowfall during the winter months. The sunniest city is Pontevedra with 2,223 sunny hours per year. Climate data for some locations in Galicia average 1971 to 2000 Topic Government and Politics Topic Local Government Galicia has partial self-governance, in the form of a devolved government, established on 16 March 1978 and reinforced by the Galician Statute of Autonomy, ratified on 28 April 1981. There are three branches of government, the executive branch, the Zunta de Galicia, consisting of the president and the other independently elected councillors, the legislative branch consisting of the Galician parliament, and the judicial branch consisting of the High Court of Galicia and lower courts. Topic. Executive The Zunta de Galicia is a collective entity with executive and administrative power. It consists of the president, a vice-president, and twelve councillors. 
Administrative power is largely delegated to dependent bodies. The Zunta also coordinates the activities of the provincial councils Galician, deputations located in A Coruña, Pontevedra, Orense and Lugo. The president of the Zunta directs and coordinates the actions of the Zunta. He or she is simultaneously the representative of the autonomous community and of the Spanish state in Galicia. He or she is a member of the parliament and is elected by its deputies and then formally named by the monarch of Spain. Legislative The Galician parliament consists of 75 deputies elected by universal adult suffrage under a system of proportional representation. The franchise includes even Galicians who reside abroad. Elections occur every four years. The last elections, held 25 September 2016, resulted in the following distribution of seats. Partido Popular de Galicia PPDEG, 41 deputies 47.56% of popular vote. En Marea, 14 deputies 19.07% of popular vote. Partido Socialista de Galicia PSDEG PSOE, 14 deputies 17.87% of popular vote. Bloc Nacionalista Galago BNG, 6 deputies 8.33% of popular vote. Topic. Judicial Topic. Municipal governments There are 314 municipalities Galician, Cancelos, in Galicia, each of which is run by a mayor-council government known as a Cancelo. There is a further subdivision of local government known as an Entidade Local Menor, each has its own council and mayor Alcalde da Aldea. There are nine of these in Galicia, Arcos da Condesa, Bembrive, Camposancos, Chenlo, Morgadans, Pazos de Ris, Cuiamadelos, Velasobroso and Baron. Topic. National government Galicia's interests are represented at national level by 25 elected deputies in the Congress of Deputies and 19 senators in the Senate, of these, 16 are elected and 3 are appointed by the Galician Parliament. Topic. Administrative divisions Prior to the 1833 territorial division of Spain Galicia was divided into seven administrative provinces A Coruña Santiago Betanthos Mondoñedo Lugo Orense from 1833, the seven original provinces of the 15th century were consolidated into four a Coruña, capital, A Coruña, Pontevedra, capital, Pontevedra, Orense, capital, Orense, Lugo, capital, Lugo provinces of Galicia, location maps. Galicia is further divided into 53 comarcas, 315 municipalities, 93 in A Coruña, 67 in Lugo, 92 in Orense, 62 in Pontevedra, and 3,778 parishes. Municipalities are divided into parishes, which may be further divided into aldeas, hamlets, or lugaris, places. This traditional breakdown into such small areas is unusual when compared to the rest of Spain. Roughly half of the named population entities of Spain are in Galicia, which occupies only 5.8% of the country's area. It is estimated that Galicia has over a million named places, over 40,000 of them being communities. Topic. Economy In comparison to the other regions of Spain, the major economic benefit of Galicia is its fishing industry. Galicia is a land of economic contrast. While the western coast, with its major population centers and its fishing and manufacturing industries, is prosperous and increasing in population, the rural hinterland the provinces of Orense and Lugo is economically dependent on traditional agriculture, based on small landholdings called minifundios. However, the rise of tourism, sustainable forestry and organic and traditional agriculture are bringing other possibilities to the Galician economy without compromising the preservation of the natural resources and the local culture. Traditionally, Galicia depended mainly on agriculture and fishing. 
Reflecting that history, the European Fisheries Control Agency, which coordinates fishing controls in European Union waters, is based in Vigo. Nonetheless, today the tertiary sector of the economy the service sector is the largest, with 582,000 workers out of a regional total of 1,072,000 as of 2002. The secondary sector manufacturing includes shipbuilding in Vigo and Farol, textiles and granite work in A Coruña. A Coruña also manufactures automobiles, but not nearly on the scale of the French automobile manufacturing in Vigo. The Centro de Vigo de PSA Peugeot Citroën, founded in 1958, makes about 450,000 vehicles annually 455,430 in 2006. A Citroën C4 Picasso made in 2007 was their 9 millionth vehicle. Artexo, an industrial municipality in the A Coruña metropolitan area, is the headquarters of Inditex, the world's largest fashion retailer. Of their eight brands, Zara is the best known, indeed, it is the best known Spanish brand of any sort on an international basis. For 2007, Inditex had €9,435 million Euros in sales for a net profit of €1,250 million. Euros. The company president, Amancio Ortega, is the richest person in Spain and indeed Europe with a net worth of €45 billion. Euros. Galicia is home to the Savings Bank, and to Spain's two oldest commercial banks Banco Echeverria the oldest, and Banco Pastor, owned since 2011 by Banco Popular Español. Galicia was late to catch the tourism boom that has swept Spain in recent decades, but the coastal regions especially the Rias Baixas and Santiago de Compostela are now significant tourist destinations and are especially popular with visitors from other regions in Spain, where the majority of tourists come from. In 2007, 5.7 million tourists visited Galicia, an 8% growth over the previous year, and part of a continual pattern of growth in this sector. 85% of tourists who visit Galicia visit Santiago de Compostela. Tourism constitutes 12% of Galician GDP and employs about 12% of the regional workforce. The unemployment rate stood at 15.7% in 2017 and was lower than the national average. Topic. Transportation Galicia's principal airport is the Santiago de Compostela Airport. With 2,083,873 passengers in 2014, it connects to cities in Spain as well as several major European cities. There are two other commercial aviation airports in Galicia, a Coruña Airport, Alvedro and Vigo Peinador Airport. The most important Galician fishing port is the Port of Vigo, it is one of the world's leading fishing ports, second only to Tokyo, with an annual catch worth €1,500 million. Euros. In 2007 the port took in 732,951 metric tons 721,375 long tons, 807,940 short tons of fish and seafood, and about 4 million metric tons 3,900,000 long tons, 4,400,000 short tons of other cargoes. Other important ports are Farol, A Coruña, Marin and the smaller port of Villa Garcia de Arauza, as well as important recreational ports in Pontevedra capital city and Barela. Beyond these, Galicia has 120 other organized ports. The Galician road network includes autopistas and autovias connecting the major cities, as well as national and secondary roads to the rest of the municipalities. The Autovía A6 connects A Coruña and Lugo to Madrid, entering Galicia at Pedrofita do Sobrero. The Autovía A52 connects O Porinho, Orense and Benevente, and enters Galicia at A Gudinha. Two more Autovías are under construction. Autovía A8 enters Galicia on the Cantabrian coast, and ends in Bamond, Lugo province. Autovía A76 enters Galicia in Valdioras, it is an upgrade of the existing N120 to Orense. Within Galicia are the Autopista AP9 from Farol to Vigo and the Autopista AP53 also known as AG53, because it was initially built by the Zunta de Galicia from Santiago to Orense. Additional roads under construction include Autovia A54 from Santiago de Compostela to Lugo, and Autovia A56 from Lugo to Orense. The Zunta de Galicia has built roads connecting comarcal capitals, such as the before-mentioned AG-53, Autovia AG-55 connecting A Coruña to Carballo or AG-41 connecting Pontevedra to Sanxenexo. 
The first railway line in Galicia was inaugurated 15 September 1873. It ran from O Carol, Villa Garcia da Arauza to Cornas, Conxo, Santiago de Compostela. A second line was inaugurated in 1875, connecting A Coruña and Lugo. In 1883, Galicia was first connected by rail to the rest of Spain, by way of O Barco de Valdioras. Galicia today has roughly 1,100 kilometers (680 miles) of rail lines. Several 1,668 millimeters (5 feet 5 and 21 in) Iberian gauge lines operated by Adif and Renfa Operadora connect all the important Galician cities. A 1,000 millimeters (3 feet 3 and 3 in) meter gauge line operated by FIV connects Ferrol to Ribadeo and Oviedo. A electrified line is the Ponferrada Monforti de Lemos Orense Vigo line. Several high speed rail lines are under construction. Among these are the Olmedo Zamora Galicia high speed rail line that opened partly in 2011, and the Avenue Atlantic Axis route, which will connect all of the major Galician Atlantic coast cities A Coruña, Santiago de Compostela, Pontevedra, and Vigo to Portugal. Another projected avenue line will connect Orense to Pontevedra and Vigo. Topic. Demographics Topic. Population Galicia's inhabitants are known as Galicians Galician, Galagos, Spanish, Galagos. For well over a century Galicia has grown more slowly than the rest of Spain, due largely to a poorer economy compared with other regions of Spain and emigration to Latin America and to other parts of Spain. Sometimes Galicia has lost population in absolute terms. In 1857, Galicia had Spain's densest population and constituted 11.5% of the national population. As of 2007, only 6.1% of the Spanish population resided in the autonomous community. This is due to an exodus of Galician people since the 19th century, first to South America and later to Central Europe and to the development of population centers and industry in other parts of Spain. According to the 2006 census, Galicia has a fertility rate of 1.03 children per woman, compared to 1.38 nationally, and far below the figure of 2.1 that represents a stable populace. Lugo and Orense provinces have the lowest fertility rates in Spain, 0.88 and 0.93, respectively. In northern Galicia, the A Coruña Ferrol metropolitan area has become increasingly dominant in terms of population. The population of the city of A Coruña in 1900 was 43,971. The population of the rest of the province, including the city and naval station of nearby Ferrol and Santiago de Compostela, was 653,556. A Coruña's growth occurred after the Spanish Civil War at the same speed as other major Galician cities, but since the revival of democracy after the death of Francisco Franco, A Coruña has grown at a faster rate than all the other Galician cities. The rapid increase of population of A Coruña, Vigo and to a lesser degree other major Galician cities, like Orense, Pontevedra or Santiago de Compostela during the years that followed the Spanish Civil War during the mid-20th century occurred as the rural population declined, many villages and hamlets of the four provinces of Galicia disappeared or nearly disappeared during the same period. Economic development and mechanization of agriculture resulted in the fields being abandoned, and most of the population moving to find jobs in the main cities. The number of people working in the tertiary and quaternary sectors of the economy has increased significantly. Since 1999, the absolute number of births in Galicia has been increasing. In 2006, 21,392 births were registered in Galicia, 300 more than in 2005, according to the Instituto Galego de Estatística. Since 1981, the Galician life expectancy has increased by five years, thanks to a higher quality of life. Birth rate 2006, 7.9 per 1,000 all of Spain, 11.0 per 1,000 Death rate 2006, 10.8 per 1,000 all of Spain, 8.4 per 1,000 Life expectancy at birth 2005, 80.4 years all of Spain, 80.2 years Male, 76.8 years all of Spain, 77.0 years Female, 84.0 years all of Spain, 83.5 years Roman Catholicism is, by far, the largest religion in Galicia. 
In 2012, the proportion of Galicians that identify themselves as Roman Catholic was 82.2%. Urbanization The principal cities are A Coruña, Orense, Lugo, Pontevedra, Santiago de Compostela, the political capital and archiepiscopal seat, Vigo and Farol. The four Galician capital cities The largest conurbations are Pontevedra Vigo 660,000 A Coruña Farol 640,000 Topic. Migration Like many rural areas of Western Europe, Galicia's history has been defined by mass emigration. Significant internal migration took place from Galicia in the late 19th and early 20th centuries to the industrialized Spanish cities of Barcelona, Bilbao, Zaragoza and Madrid. Other Galicians emigrated to Latin America, Argentina, Uruguay, Venezuela, Mexico, Brazil and Cuba in particular. Fidel Castro was born in Cuba to a wealthy planter father who was an immigrant from Galicia. Castro's mother was of Galician descent. The two cities with the greatest number of people of Galician descent outside Galicia are Buenos Aires, Argentina, and nearby Montevideo, Uruguay. Immigration from Galicia was so significant in these areas that Argentines and Uruguayans now commonly refer to all Spaniards as Galigos Galicians. .During the Franco years, there was a new wave of emigration out of Galicia to other European countries, most notably to France, Germany, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. Many of these immigrant or expatriate communities have their own groups or clubs, which they formed in the first decades of settling in a new place. The Galician diaspora is so widespread that websites such as Philos de Galicia have been created in the 21st century to organize and form a network of ethnic Galicians throughout the world. The proportion of foreign-born people in Galicia is only 2.9% compared to a national figure of 10%. Among the autonomous communities, only Extremadura has a lower percentage of immigrants. Of the foreign nationals resident in Galicia, 17.93% are the ethnically related Portuguese, 10.93% are Colombian and 8.74% Brazilian. Topic. Language Galicia has two official languages, Galician, Galician Galigo, and Spanish known in Spain as Castellano Castilian, both of them Romance languages. Galician originated regionally, the latter was associated with Castile. Galician is recognized in the Statute of Autonomy of Galicia as the lingua propria own language of Galicia. Galician is closely related to Portuguese. Both share a common medieval phase known as Galician Portuguese. The independence of Portugal since the late Middle Ages has favored the divergence of the Galician and Portuguese languages as they developed. The official Galician language has been standardized by the Real Academia Galega on the basis of literary tradition. Although there are local dialects, Galician media conform to this standard form, which is also used in primary, secondary, and university education. There are more than 3 million Galician speakers in the world. Galician ranks in the lower orders of the 150 most widely spoken languages on earth. For more than four centuries of Castilian domination, Spanish was the only official language in Galicia. Galician faded from day to day use in urban areas. Since the re establishment of democracy in Spain in particular since passage and implementation of the Ley de Normalización Linguística, Law of Linguistic Normalization. Lay 3 1983, 15 June 1983. The first generation of students in mass education has attended schools conducted in Galician. Castilian Spanish is also taught. Since the late 20th century and the establishment of Galicia's autonomy, the Galician language is resurgent. In the cities, it is generally used as a second language for most. According to a 2001 census, 99.16% of the population of Galicia understood the language, 91.04% spoke it, 68.65% could read it and 57.64% could write it. The first two numbers understanding and speaking were roughly the same as responses a decade earlier. But there were great gains among the percentage of the population who could read and write Galician. A decade earlier, only 49.3% of the population could read Galician, and 34.85% could write it. During the Franco era, the teaching of Galician was prohibited. 
Today older people may speak the language but have no written competence because of those years. Among the regional languages of Spain, Galician has the highest percentage of speakers in its population. The earliest known document in Galician Portuguese dates from 1228. The Foro do Bo Burgo do Castro Caldelas was granted by Alfonso IX of Leon to the town of Burgo, in Castro Caldelas, after the model of the constitutions of the town of Alaris. A distinct Galician literature emerged during the Middle Ages. In the 13th century, important contributions were made to the Romance canon in Galician Portuguese, the most notable those by the troubadour Martin Codax, the priest Iras Nunes, King Denis of Portugal, and King Alfonso X of Castile, Alfonso o Sabio. Alfonso the Wise, the same monarch who began the process of establishing the hegemony of Castilian. During this period, Galician Portuguese was considered the language of love poetry in the Iberian Romance linguistic culture. The names and memories of Codax and other popular cultural figures are well preserved in modern Galicia. Topic: <inaudible> Religion. <inaudible> Christianity is the most widely practiced religion in Galicia. It was introduced in late antiquity and was practiced alongside the native Celtic religion for a few centuries which, incidentally, was re-established as an officially recognized religion in 2015. Still, today about 82.2% of Galicians identify as Catholic. Most Christians adhere to Roman Catholicism, though only 20% of the population described themselves as active members. The Catholic Church in Galicia has had its primatial seat in Santiago de Compostela since the 12th century. Since the Middle Ages, the Galician Catholic Church has been organized into five ecclesiastical dioceses Lugo, Orense, Santiago de Compostela, Mondoñedo Farol and Tui Vigo. While these may have coincided with contemporary 15th-century civil provinces, they no longer have the same boundaries as the modern civil provincial divisions. The church is led by one archbishop and four bishops. The five dioceses of Galicia are divided among 163 districts and 3,792 parishes. A few are governed by administrators, the remainder by parish priests. The patron saint of Galicia is Saint James the Greater. According to Catholic tradition, his body was discovered in 814 near Compostela. After that date, the relics of Saint James attracted an extraordinary number of pilgrims. Since the 9th century these relics have been kept in the heart of the church, the modern-day cathedral, dedicated to him. There are many other Galician and associated saints, some of the best known are, Saint Ansorius, Saint Ruddisand, Saint Marinha of Agus Santis, Saint Signorina, Treamunda and Froilan. Education <inaudible> 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 Galicia's education system is administered by the regional government's Ministry of Education and University Administration. 76% of Galician teenagers achieve a high school degree, ranked fifth out of the 17 autonomous communities. There are three public universities in Galicia University of A Coruña with campuses in A Coruña and Farol, University of Santiago de Compostela with campuses in Santiago de Compostela and Lugo, and the University of Vigo with campuses in Pontevedra, Orense, and Vigo. <laughs> health care Galicia's public health care system is the Servizo Galago de Sad. It is administered by the regional government's Ministry of Health. Topic: Culture. Topic: Architecture. Hundreds of ancient standing stone monuments like dolmens, menhirs and megalithic tumulus were erected during the prehistoric period in Galicia, amongst the best known are the dolmens of Dombate, Corvera, Axitis of Pedra da Aca, menhirs like the Lapa de Gardignans. From the Iron Age, Galicia has a rich heritage based mainly on a great number of hill forts, few of them excavated like Baronia, Sta. Tegra, San Sabrao de los and Formigueros among others. With the introduction of ancient Roman architecture there was a development of basilicas, castra, city walls, cities, villas, Roman temples, Roman roads, and the Roman bridge of Ponte Vela. It was the Romans who founded some of the first cities in Galicia like Lugo and Orense. Perhaps the best known examples are the Roman walls of Lugo and the Tower of Hercules in A Coruña. 
During the Middle Ages, a huge quantity of fortified castles were built by Galician feudal nobles to mark their powers against their rivals. Although the most of them were demolished during the Ermandino Wars 1466 some Galician castles that survived are Pamber, Castro Caldelas, Sobroso, Sutomayor and Monterey among others. Ecclesiastical architecture raised early in Galicia, and the first churches and monasteries as San Pedro de Rocas, began to be built in 5th and 6th centuries. However, the most famous medieval architecture in Galicia had been using Romanesque architecture like most of Western Europe. Some of the greatest examples of Romanesque churches in Galicia are the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela, the Orense Cathedral, St. John of Cavero, Our Lady Mary of Camber and the Church of San Zoan of Portamaran among others. Cuisine Galician cuisine often uses fish and shellfish. The epinada is a meat or fish pie, with a bread-like base, top and crust with the meat or fish filling usually being in a tomato sauce including onions and garlic. Caldo galago is a hearty soup whose main ingredients are potatoes and a local vegetable named grello broccoli rob. The latter is also employed in lacan con grelos, a typical carnival dish, consisting of pork shoulder boiled with grelos, potatoes and chorizo. Centala is the equivalent of king crab. It is prepared by being boiled alive, having its main body opened like a shell, and then having its innards mixed vigorously. Another popular dish is octopus, boiled traditionally in a copper pot and served in a wooden plate, cut into small pieces and laced with olive oil, sea salt and pimenton Spanish paprika. This dish is called pulpo a la galega or in Galician, polbo a fira, which roughly translates as Galician style octopus. There are several regional varieties of cheese. The best known one is the so called tatilla, named after its breast like shape. Other highly regarded varieties include the San Simon cheese from Villalba and the creamy cheese produced in the Arzua Uloa area. A classical is filoas, crepe like pancakes made with flour, broth or milk, and eggs. When cooked at a pig slaughter festival, they may also contain the animal's blood. A famous almond cake called Tarta de Santiago Street. James's cake is a Galician sweet speciality mainly produced in Santiago de Compostela and all around Galicia. Galicia has 30 products with Denomination de Oryx DO, some of them with Denomination de Oryx Protexida DOP. DO and DOP are part of a system of regulation of quality and geographical origin among Spain's finest producers. Galicia produces a number of high-quality Galician wines, including Albariño, Ribeiro, Ribera Sacra, Monterrey and Valdioras. The grape varieties used are local and rarely found outside Galicia and northern Portugal. Just as notably from Galicia comes the spirit Agardente. The name means burning water often referred to as orujo in Spain and internationally or as caña in Galicia. This spirit is made from the distillation of the pumice of grapes. Music Pop and rock Andrés Suárez, singer-songwriter from Farol, known for his poetic, insightful and often romantic lyrics. Los Suaves, hard rock, heavy metal band active since the early 1980s, from Orense Deluxe, pop, rock band from A Coruña led by XOEL López Siniestro Total, punk rock Os Resentidos, led by Anton Reixa in the 1980s Herederos da Cruz, rock band singing in Galician language Hip-hop Dios que te crew, powerful band of hip hop with social compromised lyrics. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Folk and traditionally based music. Luar na Lubre, a band inspired by traditional Galician music. They have collaborated with Mike Oldfield and other musicians. Carlos Núñez, he has also collaborated with a great number of artists, being notable his long-term friendship with the Chieftains. Susanna Sivane, virtuoso piper. She descends from a family of pipe makers and stated she preferred pipes instead of dolls during her childhood. Milodoro Cristina Pato Topic: Literature, poetry and philosophy. 
As with many other Romance languages, Galician Portuguese emerged as a literary language in the Middle Ages, during the 12th and 13th centuries, when a rich lyric tradition developed, followed by a minor prose tradition, whilst being the predominant language used for legal and private texts till the 15th century. However, in the face of the hegemony of Castilian Spanish, during the so-called Seculos Escuros, dark centuries, from 1530 to the late 18th century, it fell from major literary or legal written use. As a literary language it was revived again during the 18th and, most notably, the 19th century resurgence with such writers as Rosalía de Castro, Manuel Murguía, Manuel Liras Pulpero, and Eduardo Pondel. In the 20th century, before the Spanish Civil War the Hermandades da Fala Brotherhood of the language", and Grupo Nos included such writers as Vicente Risco, Ramón Cabanillas and Castellau. Public use of Galician was largely suppressed during the Franco dictatorship but has been resurgent since the restoration of democracy. Contemporary writers in Galician include José Luis Méndez Ferrin, Manuel Rivas, Chus Pato, and Suso de Toro. Topic. Public holidays Dia de San Jose Street. Joseph's Day on 19 March Strictly religious Dia do Trabajo May Day on 1 May Dia das Letras Galegas Galician Literature Day on 17 May Dia da Patria Galega Galicia's National Day also known as St. James the Apostle Day on 25 July Dia da Nossa Senhora Day of Our Lady on the 15th of August strictly religious Topic Festivals Introito or carnival is a traditional celebration in Galicia historically disliked and even forbidden by the Catholic Church Famous celebrations are held in Leza Varan and Zinzo de Limia Festa do Corpus Christi in Pontiarias, has been observed since 1857 on the weekend following Corpus Christi a movable feast and is known for its floral carpets. It was declared a festival of tourist interest in 1968 and a festival of national tourist interest in 1980. Fiera Franca, first weekend of September, in Pontevedra recreates an open market that first occurred in 1467. The fair commemorates the height of Pontevedra's prosperity in the 15th and 16th centuries, through historical recreation, theatre, animation, and demonstration of artistic activities. Held annually since 2000. Ard Lucas, in June, celebrates the Celtic and Roman history of the city of Lugo, with recreations of a Celtic weddings, Roman circus, etc. Bonfires of St. John, Noite de San Zoan or Noite da Cama is widely spread in all Galician territory, celebrated as a welcome to the summer solstice since the Celtic period, and Christianized in St. John's Day Eve. Bonfires are believed to make magas, witches, to flee. They are particularly relevant in the city of Corona, where it became fiesta of national tourist interest of Spain. The whole city participate on making great bonfires in each district, whereas the center of the party is located in the beaches of Riazor and Orzin, in the very city heart, where hundreds of bonfires of different sizes are lighted. Also, grilled sardines are very typical. Rapa das Bestas, Shearing of the Beasts, in Sabusado, the first weekend in July, is the most famous of a number of rapas in Galicia and was declared a festival of national tourist interest in 1963. Wild colts are driven down from the mountains and brought to a closed area known as a curro, where their manes are cut and the animals are marked, and assisted after a long winter in the hills. In Sabusado, unlike in other rapas, the aloidadores, fighters, each take on their task with no assistance. Festival de Ortiguera Ortiguera's Festival of Celtic World lasts four days in July, in Ortiguera. First celebrated 1978-1987 and revived in 1995, the festival is based in Celtic culture, folk music, and the encounter of different peoples throughout Spain and the world. Attended by over 100,000 people, it is considered a festival of national tourist interest. Festa da Dorna, 24 July, in Ribera. Founded 1948, declared a Galician festival of tourist interest in 2005. Founded as a joke by a group of friends, it includes the Grand Prix de Carolinas, a regatta of handmade boats, the Icarus Prize for unmotorized flight, and a musical competition, the Canción de Tosca. 
Festas do Apostolo Santiago Festas of the Apostle James, the events in honor of the patron saint of Galicia last for half a month. The religious celebrations take place 24 July. Celebrants set off fireworks, including a pyrotechnic castle in the form of the façade of the cathedral. Romeria Vikinga de Catora, Viking Pilgrimage of Catora, first Sunday in August, is a secular festival that has occurred since 1960 and was declared a festival of international tourist interest in 2002. It commemorates the historic defense of Galicia and the treasures of Santiago de Compostela from Norman and Saracen pirate attacks. Festas da Peregrina, second week of August, celebrating the Pilgrim Virgin of Pontevedra. Festa de San Froilan, 4–12 October, celebrating the patron saint of the city of Lugo. A festival of national tourist interest, the festival was attended by 1,035,000 people in 2008. It is most famous for the booze serving polbo a fira, an octopus dish. Festa do Marisco, seafood festival, October, in O Grove. Established 1963, declared a festival of national tourist interest in the 1980s. Festa da Peregrina in Pontevedra. There is a bullfighting festival at the same time. Pontevedra is the only city where there is a permanent bullring. In 2015, only five caritas took place within Galicia. In addition, recent studies have stated that 92% of Galicians are firmly against bullfighting, the highest rate in Spain. Despite this, popular associations, such as Galicia Mellor Centuradas, Galicia Better Without Bullfights, have blamed politicians for having no compromise in order to abolish it and have been very critical of local councils, especially those governed by the PP and PSOE, payment of subsidies for Caritas. The province government of Pontevedra stopped the end of these subsidies and declared the province free of bullfights. The province government of A. Coruña approved a document supporting the abolition of these events. Media Television Television de Galicia TVG is the autonomous community's public channel, which has broadcast since 24 July 1985 and is part of the Compañía de Radio Televisión de Galicia CRTVG. TVG broadcasts throughout Galicia and has two international channels, Galicia Television Europa and Galicia Television America, available throughout the European Union and the Americas through Hispasat. CRTVG also broadcasts a digital terrestrial television DTT channel known as TVG2 and is considering adding further DTT channels, with a 24-hour news channel projected for 2010. Topic. Radio Radio Galega RG is the autonomous community's public radio station and is part of CRTVG. Radio Galega began broadcasting 24 February 1985, with regular programming starting 29 March 1985. There are two regular broadcast channels, Radio Galega and Radio Galega Musica. In addition, there is a DTT and Internet channel, Sun Galicia Radio, dedicated specifically to Galician music. Galicia has several free and community radio stations. CUACFM is the headquarters of the Community Media Network which brings together media non-profit oriented and serve their community. CUACFM a Coruña, Radio Filispam Farol, Radio Roncudo Corme, Calamera Radio Santiago de Compostela, Radio Piratona Vigo and Radio Clavi Lugo are part of the Galician network of free and association of community radio broadcasters Topic. Press The most widely distributed newspaper in Galicia is La Voz de Galicia, with 12 local editions and a national edition. Other major newspapers are El Correo Gallego, Santiago de Compostela, Faro de Vigo, Vigo, Diario de Pontevedra, Pontevedra, El Progreso, Lugo, La Region, Orense, and Galicia Hawks, the first daily newspaper to publish exclusively in Galician. Other newspapers are Diario de Farol, the sports paper DXT Campeon, El Ideal Gallego from A Coruña, the Geraldo de Vivero, Atlantico Diario from Vigo and the Zornal de Galicia. Sport 
Galicia has a long sporting tradition dating back to the early 20th century, when the majority of sports clubs in Spain were founded. The most popular and well-supported teams in the region are Celta Vigo and Deportivo La Coruña. When the two sides play, it is referred to as the Galician Derby. Deportivo were champions of La Liga in the 1999-2000 season. SD Compostela from Santiago de Compostela and Racing Farol from Farol are two other notable clubs and they currently play in third level, but nowadays the third most important football team of Galicia is CD Lugo, currently playing in the second division of La Liga, Liga Adelante. Similarly to Catalonia and the Basque Country, the Galician Football Federation also periodically fields a national team against international opposition. This fact causes some political controversy because matches involving other national football teams different from the Spanish official national team threaten its status as the one and only national football team of the state. The policy of centralization in sport is very strong as it is systematically used as a patriotic device with which to build a symbol of the supposed unity of Spain which is actually a plurinational state. Football aside, the most popular team sports in Galicia are futsal, handball and basketball. In basketball, Obradoiro Cab is the most successful team of note, and currently the only Galician team that plays in the Liga ACB. Other teams are CB Briogan, Club Orense Balanchesto and Orferol. In the sport of handball, Club Balanman Kangas plays in the top flight Liga ASOBAL. The sport is particularly popular in the province of Pontevedra with the three other Galician teams in the top two divisions, SD Tucro Pontevedra, Octavio Pelotes Posada Vigo, and SD Chapella Redondela. In roller hockey HC Liceo is the most successful Galician team, in any sport, with numerous European and world titles. In futsal teams, Lobel Santiago and Azcar Lugo. Galicia is also known for its tradition of water sports, both at sea and in rivers, such as rowing, yachting, canoeing and surfing, in which sports is a regular winner of medals in the Olympics. Currently the most notable examples are David Cal, Carlos Perez Real and Fernando Echevarri. In the field water sport Galician par excellence are the trainer, counting Galicia with representatives in the League of San Miguel Trawlers. In recent years comes from Galicia also become a power in any triathlon in the hands of Francisco Javier Gómez Noya and Ivan Rania, both world champions, and Noya being one of the best athletes in the history of the specialty. In 2006 the cyclist Oscar Pereiro, another Galician athlete, won the Tour de France after the disqualification of American Floyd Landis, snatching him the top spot on the penultimate day. Galicians are also prominent athletes in sports such as mountaineering, where Chus Lago stands out, the third woman to reach the summit of Everest without oxygen aid, whom also has the title of Snow Leopard. Topic. Emerging sports Since 2011, several Gaelic football teams have been set up in Galicia. The first was Filos de Briogan, a Coruña, followed Artebros, Oleros, Hermanginhos, a Estrada, SDG Corvos, Pontevedra, and Suebia, Santiago de Compostela, with talk of creating a Galician league. Galicia also fielded a Gaelic football side recognized as national by the GAA that beat Brittany in July 2012 and was reported in the Spanish nationwide press. Rugby is growing in popularity, although the success of local teams is hampered by the absence of experienced expat players from English speaking countries typically seen at teams based on the Mediterranean coast or in the big cities. Galicia has a long established rugby federation that organizes its own women's, children's, and men's leagues. Galicia has also fielded a national side for friendly matches against other regions of Spain and against Portugal. A team of expat Galicians in Salvador, Brazil have also formed Galicia Rugby, a sister team of the local football club. Symbols A golden chalice enclosed in a field of azure has been the symbol of Galicia since the 13th century. Originated as a canting arms due to the phonetic similarity between the words chalice and gallus, Galicia. In Old Norman language, the first documented mention of this emblem is on the Seeger's Roll, an English medieval roll of arms where are represented all the Christian kingdoms of 13th century Europe. In following centuries, the Galician emblem was variating, diverse shapes and number of chalices initially three and later one or five, wouldn't be until the 16th century that its number was fixed finally as one single chalice. 
Centuries after, a field of crosses was slowly added to the azure background, and latterly also a silver host. Since then basically the emblem of the kingdom would be kept until nowadays. The ancient flag of the Kingdom of Galicia was based mainly on its coat of arms until the 19th century. However, when in 1833 the government of Spain decided to abolish the kingdom and divided it in four provinces, the Galician emblem as well as flag, lost its legal status and international validity. It wouldn't be until the late 19th century that some Galician intellectuals nationalist politicians and writers began to use a new flag as symbol a renewed national unity for Galicia. That flag, what was composed by a diagonal stripe over a white background, was designated official flag of Galicia in 1984, after the fall of the Franco's dictatorship. In addition, the Royal Academy of Galicia asked the Galician government to incorporate the ancient coat of arms of the kingdom onto the modern flag, being present in it since then. In addition to its coat of arms and flag, Galicia also has an own anthem. While it is true that the Kingdom of Galicia had during centuries a kind of unofficial anthem known as the Solemn March of the Kingdom, the Galician current anthem was not created until 1907, although its composition had begun already in 1880. Titled, Os Pinos, The Pines, the Galician anthem lyrics was written by Eduardo Pondel, one of the greatest modern Galician poets, and its music was composed by Pascual Vega. Performed for the first time in 1907 in Havana, Cuba, by Galician emigrants, the anthem was banned since 1927 by diverse Spanish governments until 1977, when it was officially established by the Galician authorities. Topic: Sites. Topic: Galicians. Topic: Honor. Galicia Peak in Vincent Massif, Antarctica is named after the autonomous community of Galicia. See also Timeline of Galician history List of Castros in Galicia Notes References Topic Bibliography Topic External Links Galicia Travel Guide from Wikivoyage